We're going to be talking about fidelity theft. This is a theft of monies uh, from within the office. So perhaps a staff member uh, stealing uh, monies. Now, I just want to do this graphically so you might make, it might be easier to understand. Let's assume for a minute that we've got here the office manager or the license holder. Let's assume they're the same person. There's various areas that uh, the uh, fidelity theft can occur. For example, what we can do to limit this is limit the volume of cash. If we limit the volume of cash in an office, then obviously there's less temptation. But how are we going to do that? Well, we should be using FPOST for rental payments, um, uh, bank transfers, things like that in regards to purchaser uh, deposits uh, for security bonds for rental properties. So that is something that the manager should be implementing. The other thing that we can be doing is separate the duties. Now this may be difficult in smaller offices, but you need to consider these sort of things. So for example, you shouldn't be having the same person counting cash, receipting cash, then banking the cash. So always consider that area as well. So for example, one person might be receipting and counting, the other person might be banking or something like that. So separating those duties if you're able to. Um, in smaller offices, it, that may be difficult. The other thing that a manager or license holder should be aware of is red flags. Now you might think, well, what are red flags? Red flags are little hints that you should always keep in, uh, open uh, ears for. For example, you might have a tenant who complains to you, the manager, that they get letters for rent arrears, but they claim they always pay their rent on time. So where is the money going? So that could be a red flag. That's just one example. Something else that you should be wary of here is the manager should understand the accounting function. Now this is probably one of the hardest areas because most managers or license holders may be too busy, uh, particularly if it's a selling license holder, the license holder is a salesperson, they might be too busy selling properties and maybe doesn't have the time or the inclination to fully understand the accounting functions. Unfortunately it is their role. However, some ways that you could do this is ask questions. Seek reports. So for example, why don't you get a bank reconciliation? Have a look at it, ask questions. Where did this deposit go? Where did this deposit come from? Show me the trust account receipt. Those sort of questions. So then the people that are working for you understand that you have an interest, but you're also watching. Now, this, this last point might be a little bit harsh, but it also is very important for the office manager. Don't give people the benefit of the doubt. You might have a staff member who's involved in um, controlling uh, funds, cash. And for example, they're too busy to take annual leave. Or they uh, might have uh, times where they're working back late and it becomes uh, a consistent uh, trait. You need to find out what's going on. People that can't have annual leave may be covering up something. There's been many cases where somebody has come in, a relief person has come in 
to take over their role and discovered theft. So that's another important area where don't give people the benefit of the doubt, always be double checking what they're doing. Okay, and that should reduce your chances of fidelity theft.